We found, um, on the one hand, uh, we confirmed the results of previous literature that there is something like a diagnostic delay and that this diagnostic delay indeed is quite, has quite a long range, uh, range in the, between several months up to years. And um, what we did in contrast to previous studies, we also had a, uh, had a look on the components of diagnostic delay. So you can always try to dissect diagnostic delay, not just looking how long does it take to make a diagnosis of CD, but you can also try to further break it down, how long does it take from the patient side, meaning the first time the patient has any symptoms until he decides I have to go to a doctor. So that's patient's delay. And the second component would be doctor's delay, meaning the first time a doctor sees a patient um, until he actually makes a diagnosis of CD. Those that may benefit from this research are as well uh, patients on the one side because um, the, if the diagnostic delay decreases this may be or might be of help for patients and on the other hand it should also benefit uh, physicians because physicians are the ones that are directly addressed here in terms of this discrepancies or divergences in the diagnostic delay that we found. Well, that's the most difficult question and that's exactly what we cannot um, answer. We can only describe the discrepancies. We can see there is discrepancies and we can describe um, in, in, in which subgroup of patients do you see these discrepancies. But what we cannot do is um, give the reason for these discrepancies. So this is the much more tough point about it and this will be more difficult to investigate further. So the subgroups that were most interesting were um, sex, so men and women. If you compare men and women, another subgroup of interest was age at diagnosis. So it doesn't matter if your celiac disease is diagnosed in the, in the age of 20 or in the age of 60. And another subgroup that is of interest is patients with symptoms, gastrointestinal symptoms that were attributed or diagnosed as IBS compared to those where IBS never was an issue. For me, the most important finding is if you compare men and women. The diagnostic delay in women was substantially longer compared to men. And if you looked further on that, um, if you looked at patient delay, so the time, symptoms, until going to a doctor's, it was exactly similar. There was no difference in men and women, however, if you looked at the doctor's delay, doctor's delay in women was significantly longer compared to men. One issue that you could think of would be women do have more IBS symptoms, so physicians might say, well, this woman that I have here with uh, abdominal symptoms, it's maybe just an IBS, so I'm not going to look for celiac disease. But we, of course, looked for that and we could see th those differences in uh, doctor's delay. You could equally observe them in women with IBS symptoms compared to men with IBS symptoms or women without IBS symptoms and no diagnosis of IBS compared to men. So what I can, or what we can say is IBS does not be, cannot be the explanation for this increased uh, doctor's delay in celiac disease. We were surprised to see that there indeed were consequences. Even um, in this relatively small, well we can say almost 2,000 patients isn't small, but it's not, not an, an entirely large subset of patients we could see that diagnostic delays seem to matter. So what we first could see is if you were diagnosed within two years, uh, shorter or within two years, you had a much higher likelihood of being free from symptoms six or 12 months after diagnosis if you followed the gluten-free diet and so on compared to those patients that were not diagnosed in this period but had a longer delay. So you could speculate that with a longer diagnostic delay in CD there happens something to the bowel um, and to the disease itself that makes it more difficult in the future to address these symptoms with a gluten-free diet. That was our first key finding and another key finding was that those patients with a longer diagnostic delay significantly more often had 
nutritional deficiencies to observe. So you could see that the, they had more often um, vitamin B deficiency, iron deficiency, calcium, vitamin D deficiency. So and uh, if you want so a proxy for a more severe disease course. And another, just the last point with regards to that is a few patients with celiac disease need further drug treatment besides gluten-free diets. So steroids or immunosuppressive treatment. These are the, the worst uh, the worst cases if you want so and we could see that these patients in need of immunosuppressive treatment were significantly more often found in the group with a longer diagnostic delay. The, the research from here goes into further analyzing which factors may be also um, associated with an increase in uh, diagnostic delay especially in doctor's delay um, age of patient, education level would be an interesting point to look at, um, concomitant diseases, smoking status and of course our research also goes into further looking at does it really matter diagnostic delay, is it just that you need longer time to diagnose a patient and the patient may have you know a longer time with symptoms that are not properly addressed uh, appropriately addressed with a gluten-free diet for instance and well the the ultimate goal of course would be can you do anything to um, wash away this discrepancy or at least flatten it that this increase in doctor's delay is not so much anymore prevalent in the future, especially in women.